Hey everybody, this is JD Gaming, and today I wanted to share with you one of my all-time favorite articles when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! gaming theory. Now, whenever you check out your informational site, whether that's Pojo, ARG, Core TCG, or the Konami site, or, you know, take your pick, you often see articles by great players about individual cards, or interesting combos and interactions, and sometimes even theories like Patrick Hobening using three upstart goblins to decrease the size of your deck, what have you. But not often is it that you hear someone say, I was successful at this event because math was used in deck building, and math was used to guide my play decisions. But should we be neglecting math? Well, if you think about it, wouldn't your math teacher teach you when 2 plus 2 equaled 4? Well, obviously 2 plus 2 equaled 4, but also 2 plus 2 always equals 4. It's an empirical fact that 2 plus 2 will always give you 4. Likewise, by using mathematics, probability, and statistics, you will actually have some concrete evidence as to why you should be making certain decisions for deck building and plays. Should you be playing this many copies of a draw acceleration card, or rather, do you need it for that two-card combo to work? What does the semi-limitation of a card actually do? Does it do anything? All this stuff and more can be answered. Uh, this is an article by Jason Grever Meyer from uh, 2009 called 10 Numbers to Make You a Better Duelist. I'll be sharing just six of them with you today. And uh, in addition to this article, which you can read in your leisure, link will be in the description box down below, I have a hypergeometric calculator over here we'll get to in a second, also in the link down below, that you can hopefully use as a tool to better your game by using something that never changes, math. So the first number on our list is 39%, which is the probability of opening with at least one copy of a card you run three of. A card that's limited. Want to open with that Soul Charge? Or that Curry Bandit in your Light Swarms? Want that MST to get rid of that Vanity's Emptiness that can totally screw up your game plan? Look no further than this basic number. We're going to go over to this hypergeometric calculator over here. Our population size is 40, thus maximizing our chances because this is the 40 card minimal deck size. Number of successes in the population, 3, because the card is unlimited and we're playing 3 copies. Sample size is 6. We could do 5 to see the impact of the no draw on your first turn rule, but that will be for a later time. And the number of successes, we're going to start with 1. This is really a number you wish to actually compare to. So here, the cumulative probability of drawing at least one copy of this card is going to be 39%, which is indeed consistent with this number, 39.4 rounded down to 39%. But even more important than the fact that you start with this two-fifths of the time, or little more than once every three games, is the fact that when a card is unlimited and you draw an additional card, you are increasing that percentage from 39% to 44, almost 45%, 5% increase essentially. What happens if you draw another card? Are we going to get another 5% increase to 49? Indeed we did. What happens if you play Pot of Duality and look at three cards from the top of your deck? Should we see a 15% increase? Yes we should. Do we? Yes. About 55% if you add the 15% to the approximately 40% of opening. That means when you have a card that's unlimited, not only are you most likely to draw the card, but you're also much more likely to pick up the card with successive draws. So playing Upstart Goblins can really help you pick up that unlimited card. Basically, this is a very important number because when we compare it to the other cards that have become semi-limited or limited, you will see that this 5% increase is a huge increase huge advantage. How can you use this number? Well, you could use it for deck building, sure. You're likely to open with Soul Charge this much, so how much do you want to build your deck around it? Well, you could also look at it. Right now, Honest is limited, but Kalit is back at 3, and there are things like Bujingi Crane that could be run in 3 in a Bujin deck. Barring searches, your opponent's chance of having one in their first turn of defending against you if they've drawn their 6 cards is 39%. So one game in every 3 on average, you're going to be very, very cautious about attacking into your opponent without any other backup plan because your opponent could have that in their opening. But this gives you an idea. Now, if you were playing competitively or even casually around 2011, the very end of the Synchro era and the beginning of the Xyz era, you remember Tengu. Reborn freaking Tengu was everywhere. And everybody was afraid of drawing two copies of him because his ability only let him fetch himself from the deck. That's irrational. And this is why. 5.4% is the probability that you will open up with at least two copies of the same card you run three of. You don't want to draw double MST? Don't worry, you probably won't. You don't want to draw double Tengu, or maybe this format. You don't want to draw double Curry Bandit because you don't want to give up two of your normal summons in that Light Swarm deck? Let's look at this. The chance that you will draw at least two copies of your limited card, or unlimited cards as you can see, 
is only 5%. Very, very low. Although a 5% boost to your high base percentage is indeed a nice boost, you really don't want to rely on 5 in 100, 1 in 20, 1 in 7 matches. Think about that for a second. Don't you think something as powerful as Tengu or Curry Bandit is worth running at maximum if your only fear is you don't want to draw two copies of it in your opening hand? The probability is extremely low. And even with the draw acceleration, as soon as you've hit one, remember, you only have two remaining in the deck. Thus, the huge 5% increase will not be as bad a threat into drawing your second one. Yes, it's something to consider if you play tons of draw acceleration, but it's simply nothing to fear and, you know, head for the hills for never play three Tengu or three Curry Bandit because you don't want to draw multiples. It simply won't happen. This also is very important because it's the probability that you will actually get screwed by your opponent opening with double JD. This number is also particularly useful when you are playing against Bujins. Let's say your opponent has a crane in their hand, right? The chance of them having a second crane immediately without any searches is a mere 5.4% because they would have had to open with both cranes. Very unlikely. Or let's say you're playing against black wings. What's the chance they'll have two callets? Only 5.4%. So realize that it's not too dangerous. Or your opponent played an early soul charge. Should you solemn warning it? Well, obviously other game factors could apply, but if your only fear is my opponent might have another soul charge, probably not, only 5.4%. Remember that number. You can also use this number to your advantage because if you draw double Cali, if you draw double Crane, your opponent probably will not see that coming if there are an experienced person who does use math because Mathematically, it won't happen. So realize that if this happens, you can surprise your opponent. A supposed bad play may turn out very good simply because it is completely unexpected. The next number we are going to discuss is 28%, the chance of opening with one of at least two exact cards. So we're going to change this number here to two cards because we only have two copies in our deck, and we're going to return this number down to one. You will see that we have indeed 28% right here, 28% chance. So this is what happens when Konami semi-limits a card. A card is only drawn 28% of the time. 33.3 repeat percent of the time would mean that we draw it, ex we expect to draw it once in every three game match. But here we don't even get that. You cannot rely on this being even in every single match. In addition, what happens if you add another card? Let's say you drew another card with Upstart Goblin. You have an increase to 32%. Only a 4% increase this time, not 5%. Is it consistent if we add another card? We should expect another 4% increase to 36. Indeed, we do see 36, which means not only do you start, as he says here, with a handicap, but you're also getting your progress hampered. You're not going to draw the card as often, even if you draw more cards. And that's something to keep in mind. That's why a card is semi-limited. You're not likely to start with it, and you're not even likely to draw into it as often. But I really love the side note, so I'm going to read this with a quick modification. It says here, as a side note, this number is important for more than just deck building. Since the probability works for any card pairing you can imagine, you can use it to evaluate the risk and calculate the odds of your opponent having certain plays. For instance, if you're considering an early game overextension committing multiple monsters on the field, but fear, let's not use Mirror Force because it's unlimited, but let's say Dark Hole or Torrential Tribute, good news, you can use this number. The chance of your opponent having one, at least, of those two cards, Dark Hole or Torrential, is also 28%. So, you take that as the base percentage. And then, if neither card has already been used, you can add up the number of cards that your opponent has seen so far after their initial hand. Multiply that by the 4% increase and add that to your base percentage. All of a sudden, you have a good idea of whether or not your opponent has drawn those cards. And of course, he says here, it's not a guarantee. This is just a number that says this is how likely your opponent is to have it. Even if something is 99.9% .9 likely to happen, you know, that 0.1% can come to bite you. Very rarely, though. So it's just a good guideline. Your opponent is unlikely to have that, that dark hole or torrential but be ready for it. The next number we're going to talk about here is 15%. It's the chance of opening with one exact card. I've already done the calculation over here, so obviously this is a limited card. 
This is why when a card in the main deck has been limited, a lot of professional players will never build a deck around that one card. Because limiting it really does kill your chances of drawing with it. You're only going to draw your Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon 15% of the time now in your opening hand. So things like Disaster Dragon that want to see it really early just can't afford to go for that anymore. Back when Teledad was hit, Dark Arm Dragon was hit to one. Heck, they hit other cards like Destiny Draw and Emergency Teleport to one as well. With all of their cards only with a 15% chance of opening them, you can see how difficult it becomes to put any of their combos or even put those cards into play. You simply won't draw them naturally. And what happens if you add another card to the draw? Well, 17.5. You gained two and a half percentage. Now, granted, this is exactly one and a half times your 2% milk jug, but really, that's nothing. That's a bad joke. But this is also a bad joke. Trying to rely on drawing a limited card is not that good. If you can search it, great for you, but most likely you will not be able to draw it. So do not build a deck solely for that card. Use it as a tech. It'll still work. This is the chance you'll open with a Thunder King, that 15% chance. It's still decent if it will really help you in the game. Also, I want to share this part from the article verbatim. It's really funny. AK, it's also uh, known as the chance of my opponent screwing me over with Heavy Storm if I set two cards. Now, anyone who's played years where Heavy Storm was legal at one, everyone was afraid to set two cards in their opening hand because you would lose all your cards. But the fact is, your opponent's only going to open with that Heavy Storm 15% of the time. So, realistically speaking, Heavy Storm, the two-for-one, is most certainly a frightening boogeyman, but its bark can be a little bit worse than its actual percentage to bite. Food for thought. 1.9% is our next number. It's the chance of opening with two exact cards. So let's say you're playing against Insectors, and right now Insector Hornet and Dragonfly are both limited. Your opponent's only going to draw them 2% of the time. That's it. Is that deck really that dangerous? Well, yes, still, in certain metagames. And here's why. First, you got to realize that the chance of drawing two exec cards is very, very low. So you shouldn't really try to build a deck just around that combo. But think of Insectors. They have centipedes, you know, ways that they can search things. They're allowed to play Foolish Burials. Uh, Allure of Darkness, Pot of Duality, all these cards that can accelerate their cards, plus they don't necessarily need to open up with just that Hornet-Dragonfly combo in order to win. And that's what, as you can see here, makes that combo so dangerous. Your opponent doesn't expect you to have that first turn. So your opponent might be playing monsters on the board or cards on the field that might die to your Insector-Hornet-Dragonfly play. So this is another example where if you have this rare of a play and it's that powerful, you can catch your opponent completely off guard with it. Take advantage of the fact that your opponent probably will not be prepared and use your best combo to destroy your opponent. Seriously, it doesn't happen all that often. 2% of the time, 1 in 50, divide that by 3 games, you have essentially a 1 in 17 match chance of getting that combo off. So if you open with that combo, realize how rare it is. Seize that opportunity. Your opponent will not expect it. Use it. The final number we're going to talk about here is 14%. It's a chance of opening with a two-card combo of two different cards you run in triplicate. So this is a little more advanced and actually doesn't use the Stat Trek hypergeometric calculator. And I actually have no idea how you're supposed to calculate it. I've looked into it, but I still have no idea. So if you're a math wizard, enlighten all of us. I really would like to know how to calculate this. But the idea is, take my Psychic deck as an example. If you've seen the deck profile, you know that I play Emergency Teleport and Instant Fusion in that deck at threes. And it gives me a 14% chance of opening with basically any Synchro or Xyz monster in my extra deck, minus Leo because, you know, my five plus three won't get me up there. But regardless, 14% chance isn't particularly high. It's 1% less actually than a limited card, so I'm going to get this combo off in my opening hand less than I would draw a Black Luster Soldier. Not a particularly good number to build your deck on, and that's why a deck like this that has this combo will need tons of draw acceleration and or many different branching plays that can utilize those combo pieces to maximize the efficiency of your deck. And with that efficiency will come the consistency that you desire to make your deck competitive at a higher level. 
So if you have your own combo deck at home, this is your chance of opening with that combo, and you can see how important it is to decrease the size of your deck with, via upstart goblins, to increase your draw opportunities with things like Allure of Darkness, things like Duality, just things like that. You want more draw power when you have a combo deck. It is not a particularly great number to rely on, though it is a very good start. And in case you were wondering, the chance your opponent will open up with three Judgment Dragons and screw you over turn one is a mere 0.2%. So I hope you guys enjoy this information. This is JD Gaming, and I'll see you guys next time.